Cheers, guys. Epics 911 back in action. I'll give you a quick recap of why I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks. You guys, uh, for, for those of you that have watched from the beginning, know I broke my ankle back in January. It was one of the reasons I started this channel was to basically lift my spirits because I'd been on a roll with exercise and health and um, I did something stupid. Walked on a, a wet boardwalk in the middle of a forest trail clicks away from civilization and uh, broke my ankle and uh, proceeded to have a bit of a pity party really you know pity parties where you kind of feel sorry for yourself and woe is me and all that other bullshit and then uh, yeah drank a lot of beers and basically gained a shit ton of weight which I needed to hit the fucking reset button on and that's exactly what I did Last month, July 26th, I started my health regime. It's two weeks now to the day, and it's something I plan on continuing. I needed to get traction. I think there's a saying that says it takes 21 attempts or 21 whatever iterations to have something become a habit. Well, I accelerated that a little bit. I I figured it would take me about two weeks to get good habits. Now, the thing with me is I've got a pretty addictive personality. Um, whether it's MMOs, exercise, not exercising, and eating shit food, I swing from an addiction to an addiction, and I recognize that in myself. It's good, and it's bad. The good is, well, I can get pretty focused on stuff and stick to it stick to itness is definitely uh, a good thing. The bad thing is, depending on the addiction, I can go overboard. I get very obsessive. And even good addictions is probably not good to be too obsessive. But for health, you know, um, I think it's a good way to go. MMOs, probably not so much. So there you have it. That's the reason why um, basically I dropped off for a couple of weeks. But I'm back. I'm freaking regenerated. I feel hell's yeah good. Uh, I've, I've even noticed a lot of the dark circles under my eyes gone away just from eating right, getting proper sleep and nutrition. Today's topic, RPGs. This is one of those things that um, I really want to get out there because it bugs my liver when you hear people talking about RPGs. Um, because most people don't have a true history of what RPGs are and I see this all the time when I see top RPG lists and it's basically JRPGs and JRPGs absolutely drove the genre at times when what I'll call CRPGs or Western RPGs couldn't or didn't but where did it start what is a role-playing game? Role-playing games trace their lineage back simply to Dungeons and Dragons, a game that uh, Gary Gygax and others developed. And it came about because these guys were into uh, miniature war games. So they would use lead figures, soldiers on a battlefield, and act out wars, and it was a hobby club that had some pretty complicated rules for the time. They were doing this in the 60s, and as the 70s rolled around, they decided to give it more of a fantasy bent. Uh, and, well, when you start throwing magic fireballs, well, let's back up a bit. I believe um, Arn said it was a, uh, uh, a castle rescue that's what it was. It was your typical medieval war game, but they incorporated a castle rescue into it. So they needed dimensions and movement rates for the interior of the castle because most of the stuff happens on streets or in fields, you know, that they had been doing. Using a castle uh, made them ask all kinds of questions. Well, what about light? Okay. Well, 
they incorporated fantasy. What do you do with fireballs? What do you do with magic missiles? And they needed rules for that. And it developed into the Dungeons and Dragons that we know today. Uh, four versions of it. First edition, second, third, and fourth, and soon to be another. Well, it's not exactly correct. Five editions if you count 3.5. With a sixth coming out. I've played all of them. I'm a big pen and paper guy, and admittedly, currently, in the last few years, I haven't had an opportunity to play because I'm not in touch with all of my friends at the same time. We've all got lives, and we haven't really scheduled a specific time. But Dungeons and Dragons was epic for the time. When it was released in 74, the rules quickly hit the underground. The rules hit colleges universities across North America. Whether in Canada or in the States, Dungeons and Dragons hit big time. And among the early players of Dungeons and Dragons were guys like Richard Garriott, the developers of wizardry, even the people who played roguelikes. Roguelikes were a way to get the Dungeons and Dragons rule set, albeit in a cropped fashion on a computer terminal, that's what they used at the times so on a mainframe, and play it via terminal, to approximate D&D for a single player experience, including the hardcore death rules. So you had early adventure games and roguelikes. Then things changed. Richard Garriott released Alkalabeth. And he did that after a bunch of his D&D &D versions. I can't remember off the top of my head, and I'm not going to cheat, but 20-plus, I'm pretty sure, D&D &D versions he had, culminating in Alkalabeth. And then Ultima 1. And Ultima 1 was really, really important for changing things. As was another game, which was released around the same time, and that was Wizardry. Richard continued the focus of the roguelikes, which was single player, at least with Ultima 1 and 2. That changed in 3, but that's another story for another video. It was basically a graphical version of the roguelikes with a lot more to do. You had space, you had uh, above ground, and you had below ground. Wizardry, by contrast, was a party-based game. So really, it approximated more the feeling that you had when you were gathered around the table with friends. And the cool thing about Wizardry was, and I did this and continue to do it with other games like Bard's Tale, and I know a lot of people did this. It was not uncommon for three, four, five people to huddle around an Apple II or a Commodore 64 and each have their own character and perform the actions of their own character during combat. It was kind of like, and we did this a lot when we had a, when we wouldn't have a dungeon master available. We'd pick a game like that, uh, each pick a character, and then go through it. How does this tie into the JRPGs? Well, some Japanese programmers saw Ultima One and Wizardry and said, "Wow, this is cool. This rocks." let's create something similar and games like Dragon Warrior aka Dragon Quest were born as well as a bunch of other JRPG primitive ones on the Nintendo Entertainment System and so the genre JRPG which is really just Japanese role-playing game was itself inspired by CRPGs Ultima and Wizardry of course, future JRPGs would be uh, inspired by previous JRPGs, but the first JRPGs were definitely inspired by Ultima and Wizardry. And I'm a guy who was a fan of both series. I played both series, uh, Wizardry 4. There's some exceptions there because that game was for masochists only. And... Uh, uh, the Ultimas, I've pretty much played them all and finished them all with the exception of Ultima 8 
and 9 for reasons I can get into in another video. So do I play JRPGs? Absolutely. I was a late starter to the genre because I kind of made fun of it and had the elitist attitude that CRPGs were superior. And then I played Chrono Trigger and things changed. I still like a deep meaty Western RPG, but I love me a good JRPG. And uh, well, that's basically it. So when you use RPG, just remember the historical context. If you truly say just RPG, then that's a global statement. That includes JRPGs and Western or CRPGs. Sure, if you want to be specific and say, well, what's your top 10 JRPGs or what's your top 10 CRPGs? Perfect. But uh, when I see threads that say, you know, list your top RPGs or list the most, it's not the top because that's subjective. This is what it was that bugged my liver was, what do you think are the most important RPGs of all time? And then to not see a CRPG or a Western RPG on that list breaks my heart because it's obviously written by people who don't understand the history. Because if you were to say what's the most influential RPG of all time and you had a top three list, you simply would not have a choice, subjectivity or not, of placing Ultima or Wizardry 1 on that list. Because they started the JRPG genre. And there you have it. Questions, comments, I'd love to hear them, guys. Leave them below. Subscribe to the channel if you like the channel. These are the types of videos I do. I hope the weather turns around pretty soon and I can be back up in my bedroom because the dungeon is, well, the dungeon. And there you have it. As always, cheers, guys.